Good afternoon, everybody. I know it's after 12 o'clock. Good afternoon, everybody. We are here for the last budget presentation of County Executive Rashern Baker. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to the County Executive of Prince George's County, Mr. Rashern L. Baker III. Thank you, Barry. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing? Good, good. Welcome to our last budget presentation. So we, we're here. The very last budget presentation of the Baker administration. I couldn't help as I was uh, walking down the stairs uh, coming in here to reflect on the last seven years and memories of the, uh, the very first budget. I don't, Scott, I don't know if you remember this, um, but I came in here and the room looked much like it is today. It was crowded and the lights, I think they turned these lights on. And, uh, and I thought about what I was stepping into. Brand new county executive, FBI investigation going on, a $77 million budget deficit and I felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders. And my mouth dried. And as I was standing up here speechless for several minutes, someone nudged our press secretary and he brought me water. <laughs> when I took the oath of office in 2010, a housing crisis had driven was driven by the highest number of foreclosures in the nation. We had 13 homicides in 13 days. I had to ask myself, what do I want Prince George's County to become under my leadership? With that question in mind, my administration embarked on a strategic plan to transform Prince George's County into the place to be in the Washington, D.C. region and the state of Maryland. Now there is no question, it was difficult. But as we approached this situation with optimism, because we knew that through planning and setting clear goals, better days were ahead. But the toughest part was assessing our financial situation and devising a plan that would deliver us to prosperity. With the weight of the housing crisis, a historic decline in the American economy, we needed to do things differently. We needed to be innovative, aggressive, while at being ever mindful that we were fiscal stewards on behalf of the residents of Prince George's County. That stewardship began with a framework that has guided our decision making for the last seven years. And that framework is what we call the Baker Principles. <laughs> It was this framework that directed us as we catapulted this county to new heights. We made tough decisions. And yes, talk to department heads, we made cuts. But we also made sound investments <laughs> that we knew would pay off in the future. In the end, our goal then, as it is now, was to pass a healthy county financial situation on to the next administration. Six years ago, we developed a long-term economic strategy derived from our vision. This vision guided our budget planning process as we prioritize our spending and investments. So we created a roadmap that would take us where we ultimately wanted to go. Our quest was to revive our economy while diversifying our revenue streams. We wanted to protect, project this county, protect this county from being crippled by another devastating turn in the national economy. Now, uh, we didn't have any of this uh, vibranium that's in that movie, uh, <laughs> although I wish I had some. <laughs> but what we did have were some unique assets to build upon. We had over 500 square miles of county, undeveloped metro stops, 
neighborhoods close to Washington, D.C., an educated and affluent population. Yes, we had some strong assets to work with. For the first, four, first, first six years of this administration, we asked every agency to rethink how they could provide services without sacrificing quality. Simultaneously, we increased our investments in education and public safety because we knew that reducing crime and improving our public education system would be essential for us to achieve our vision. And despite the challenges that we face, high foreclosure rates, unemployment, over-dependency on residential property taxes, high incidence of crime, low value uh, properties, and limited commercial development. I can stand here today proud of the work that we have done to increase our revenue streams by investing in projects that have spurred economic expansion. Today, this county regional and national stature has risen and our economy is thriving. The historic level of development has created 20,600 new jobs in Prince George's County since 2013. That is an increase of 3.4% in jobs just over last year alone. Our communities and our neighborhoods are safer by significantly reducing overall crime in the county by 49 percent and this year today our homicide rates in the county are 50 percent lower than they were at this time last year and last November we broke ground on something people thought would never happen a brand new regional medical center the University of Maryland Capital Regional Medical Center we also broke ground on the purple line the new United States Citizen and Immigration Services headquarters that will be located at Branch Avenue Metro Station. And then there is my favorite, the new Suitland Town Center. Our housing values are up 64% since 2011. Unemployment has dropped 4%. By creating thousands of jobs, we are now number one in the state in job creation and we have maintained that for four quarters in a row. We have increased the county's funding to our education system, Dr. Maxwell, by 28% since 2011. School and, you're welcome. <laughs> and with that, just think about it. School enrollments are up 9.5% after declines in the previous years. We have seen significant expansion of our pre-K program and we have added more rigor, rigorous academic programs. Our only initiative of this county government has been and is the Transforming Neighborhoods Initiative, or better known as TNI. It has been nationally recognized as an innovative approach to empowering neighborhoods. We pursued our vision, and these results are just a few of the things that have happened. But uh, this didn't happen by accident. We made key investments where we would get the greatest rate of return. So seven years later, after all of this work and focus, our financial situation in Prince George's County is the best that it's ever been. We are not just on the right path. We are well positioned for the future. Right, Howard Stone? This could not have happened without having some amazing people working with me. And the first name I'd like to call off is our DCAO for Budget, Finance, and Administration. For his financial leadership and his innovation during this administration, he has been by my side for each and every budget. He actually felt sorry for me when I couldn't speak at the very first one. <laughs> and he stepped in, but I say that the county has been blessed to have someone of his skills, and if you don't mind, can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> Thomas Himmler. I would also like my executive team to stand up 
these men and women, the leadership team, Linda, Nick, everybody up here. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> Think about it. This administration has accomplished a great deal. We could have not, I could have not done it without these folks here. Together we have made some tough decisions. Solved some difficult and complex problems, right Betty? And I want to thank them for standing by me each and every step of the way. They never once questioned, you know, my crazy ideas. Uh, if you believe that, we can talk later. <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Stanley Early and his team. Stanley is the Director of Budget uh, Management and Budget and his team. If we can give Stanley a round of applause. <laughs> and though she's not here, I don't see her, um, Terry Picote Charles who led us through several budgets um, when she was here. Certainly we couldn't have gotten through these tough times without her help and leadership. Their hard work and our laser focused stewardship has enabled us to maintain the very important AAA bond rating of Prince George's County seven years in a row. Think about it. Counties like Howard County and Montgomery County as well as Fairfax and Loudoun County have a triple A bond rating from all three major rating agencies. And guess who else has one? Prince George's County. <laughs> this is the result of our investments and today we no longer look at, and I'm glad Tom, because I was getting scared, hundred million dollar deficits. Think about it, Todd, when we hand this over to the council, for the second year in a row, we will hand the council a budget that deficit of less than $10 million. $10 million. We went from $77 million when I first came here to one time it spiked to $152 million. We will hand them over the smallest budget. So this year I am proud to propose a budget that exceeds $4 billion, a historic threshold for us in Prince George's County. This budget is $4.1 billion and will continue our investment in key areas that have moved this county forward. The most important area and the one I'd like to talk about first is education. Funding for education all levels we fund education at all levels because college and job readiness is the basis why we educate our children. The FY 2019 proposed budget includes $2.05 billion in funding for the Board of Education. That is an increase of $72.3 million or 3.7 over last year's budget. The county's contribution what we give is $764 million, which represents an increase of $25 million over the FY 2018 budget and exceeds the maintenance of effort by $13.6 million. The increase, yes, clap. <laughs> <laughs> the increase in funding to the Board of Education it supports expansion of programs like the Pathway and Technology High School Program, the Peer Assistance and Review for Teachers. In addition, we are expanding security in this time. Today we watch some of our students um, leave the classroom to make a statement of safety, not only in their high schools, but solidarity with children who have lost their lives in Florida. That is why this budget expands the security staffing at the schools and makes equipment upgrades. But we also included in the budget that we're giving to the school uh, adjustments to, for compensation for the dedicated school employees, including raises for teachers. And we are also making significant investments in a number of school construction projects, some of which you've seen around the county, whether it's Fairmont Heights and others. But we're putting in the budget $110 million in county capital funds to support the completion of projects like the renovation of Stephen Decatur Middle School and the replacement 
a William Wirth Middle School. These are examples of some of the systematic replacement projects proposed to take place throughout Prince George's County. Under the area of economic development, we're very pleased with the work that has been done in the county. We have made tremendous strides in economic development over the years, but we continue to make adjustments that will move us forward. This year's proposed budget sep proposed separating the Workforce Development Corporation and the great work that they're doing from the Economic Development Corporation, or ED EDC, creating two separate agencies. By doing this, what we hope to accre uh, create, and I think we will, with the creation of the Workforce Development Corporation, we believe that EDC can more effectively focus its efforts on marketing and promoting the county as a superior place to bring your business. By providing business services and nurturing startup businesses, but also approaching international firms. But they will still work together because Workforce Development is doing a great job. And I know under the leadership there, they will continue and we should give them give them a round of applause on this creation. We hope the county will. In the area of public safety, to continue the success that we have had making our community safer, and the, the county will continue to make significant investments in the men and women who protect us each and every day. The proposed FY 2019 budget for public safety agencies will provide resources necessary to meet the needs of an ever-growing base of residents and businesses. Specifically, additional funds will be allowed for the following new personnel. 125 police officer recruits, 60 firefighters, 15 deputy sheriffs, and 60 correctional officers. The strides that we have made over the last seven years are because we have focused on building a strong public safety team that is among the best in the state, the region, and the nation. This year's budget will continue that trend. In the area of health and human services, this year's fiscal plan also prioritizes assistance for super supportive services to our fellow residents who need access to care and preventive services. General fund support for these agencies will total $37 million, which is an increase of $1.5 million over the FY 2018 budget. Funding for the family services will support new initiatives and expand services and programs in the areas of disability and aging services. And in FY 2019, we will launch a new program that is very special to me, a program called Safe Return. This program is designed to assist adults and families who are struggling with the challenges associated with dementia. I understand this program well, and I said during the budget when we were talking about the program, I see my son sitting in the back, and I know he remembers this, late one night, I turned over to try and find my wife, and she was gone. I went all around the house looking for her, and finally went outside, and she was down the street. It was one in the morning. And when this program came up, I couldn't help but think about the individuals we've lost in this county, mm -hmm. and how if we simply had a device where our police could get to them, that they would have been back safe. And so this is something we want, not just for me, but for everybody, those who can't afford it. This program will go a long ways, and I'm so proud that we'll be implementing this. These and other, in other investments in this year's budget are about continuing the effort to build a strong financial fi foundation for this county. Because over the years, we have made targeted investments to improve the quality of life for the people who live and work in this great county. From the beginning of this administration till now, we have seen funding for our school system increase by $414 million, or a 25% increase. 
county funding for our school system has increased by $165 million under my administration, taking it from $599 million of county support to $764 million, which is a 28% increase of county's portion. In addition, county funding to the community college, which is a vital part of our education system, has increased by $11 million, taking their budget, very much, taking their budget from $30 million to $41 million. Over the years, we have also increased funding to our library system which is also a critical part of our growth in the county, by $5 million, taking us from $17 million to $22 million. In public safety, we've increased the amount of money that we give to public safety by $193 million, police, fire EMS, corrections, and sheriffs are going from $491 million to $684 million. This investment has led to the addition of 395 sworn public safety staff, taking us from 2,833 staff to 3,228 staff. And finally, the general fund reserve has increased by $148 million, going from $278 million to $426 million. Most of you know how close I was to the late Wayne Keith Curry, my friend and mentor. And used to have a saying that Prince George's County, is, he said, Baker, Prince George's County is the land of milk and honey. He believed it, like I do, that we have everything we need here to be successful and Wayne would challenge us to believe in ourselves and to pick up the mantle and continue the fight for the county that he loved well ladies and gentlemen that is exactly what this administration has done we have picked up that mantle and we have fought to bring this county back after our decline we invested in the future by creating the economic development incentive fund a 50 million dollar fund that was designed to attract and retain businesses and jobs in this county. Today, that fund has spurred $1 billion in investment and created or retained over 12,000 jobs. We fought to expand gaming in order to bring more jobs and revenues and high-end retail to Prince George's County. Today, MGM is the highest grossing casino in the state and has brought in 3,000 jobs and millions of dollars of revenues for the state and the county. We created the Department of Permits, Inspections, and Enforcement, or DPI, to streamline development in this county and to make ourselves more business friendly. We targeted development around five metro stations, and today all five of those metro stations have development underway. We remade, Adam Ortiz, the Department of Environmental Resources by creating the Department of the Environment, and we are now leading the state in recycling and waste diversion, as well as creating a brand new green energy industry by our historic agreement with Exelon Pepco. And on a side note, I said this earlier in the cabinet meeting. When I was at a national presentation and the outgoing administration, the Obama administration, sent someone from EPA to talk about areas in the country that were doing it right around the environment. The thing that popped up on the screen was Prince George's County and our Department of Environment. That shows where we have been. We created in this time of the administration 311 and county staff are helping us better serve residents by providing them information that enables us to make decisions that are data driven. Our parks and our recreation facilities and our libraries are among the best in the region. We have improved access to health care 
through coordination and collaboration with the county, the state, the federal government, nonprofits, and the private resources. These investments have stabilized our financial situation of our government. These investments have laid the, the groundwork and the foundation for those who will follow us. These investments will make us a better county and continue our rise in the region. Now, I don't know if anybody's aware of it or not, but this may be a secret. But there's an election year going on. <laughs> From county council to county executive, I think there's even a governor's race going on. And you'll hear a lot of chatter about what's wrong in Prince George's County. But there is at least one thing that is undisputable. The person who will stand before you giving and delivering the 2020 budget will be taking over a government that is in the best financial situation it has been in years with growing revenues and sound investments. The next county executive who will give you a budget presentation won't be talking about millions of dollars of deficit like I did when I first walked in. You see, we are leaving this county in a better financial situation than when we started. You know, over the last seven years, despite the challenges and issues we faced as a county, the thing that has always kept me going and kept me inspired were the words that I would see receive as I went around this great county of ours. People would say thank you, um, whether it's residents or businesses. And I told you know, the staff as we were preparing this that um, the other day I was running, you know, I was out jogging, and um, a guy was coming toward me um, walking very fast. And so I had my hat on, had my glasses, you know, just trying to, you know, had my ear plugs in. And I see him, but, you know, I just keep moving. And he grabs me, and I was like, oh, shoot. He's a county executive. I was like, oh, my God. Now he's recognized me. i got to stop. <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm waiting to hear what didn't I do this time. <laughs> and he said, I don't mean to disturb you. I just want to thank you for your service. And I think I got back, and I called Glenda Wilson. I said, you know what? For all the stuff you hear, the people that matter the most, are the people who live here and take the services that we give. They're the validator. They're the ones that make the difference. I also understand when that gentleman said thank you to me, he wasn't thanking Rashern Baker. He was thanking the men and women in this room and the ones who aren't in this room who every day come to work and provide public service for the folks of Prince George's County, who spur the economic development, who make this county safer, who provide an education to our children, who make sure people's trash are picked up, who make sure recycling is an important part of us. They were thanking each and every one of them. That's what he was doing. That is the story of this county. That is why I am so proud to have had the opportunity to serve with men and women who care deeply, who care deeply about this county much the same way Wayne did. And so when I feel down and I get that note from them or I walk into a place where you're actually, where you're working, it is the thing that I will miss the most about not being county executive. And so for the last time, as county executive of Prince George's County, I gladly submit my FY 2019 budget to the county council. God bless you and God bless Prince George's County.
Please. <laughs>